So then after that, I was asked to be a sister training leader. So I went into um, Coyao, which is in Concepcion. It's kind of the more like calm suburb part of Concepcion. Um, so it's the most like city area that I had, but it's not super, super like in the middle of the city. They only have the elders in that part because it's a little bit more dangerous. And um, that area was really great too. It was, it was a little tough like working with the leadership in that ward. So I learned a lot about that. I learned a lot about how the church like actually works and um, it was a re it was really fun. I got really close with the members there too. I got really close with the members everywhere really <laughs> because I just loved working with them and I thought that was so important. So that was an area where I felt like I was really there specifically for one person because um, I had never felt that. It had been a year in my mission and I had never really felt that before. There were people that I felt like I was in the right place at the right time or I, you know, the Lord guided us to somebody and they needed our help whether or not they got baptized. You know, there were lots of little moments like that. Um, but this was one where I felt like it couldn't have been any missionary, like it had to be me. And so that was really special for me too. And, um, she's just really cool. Like she had been agnostic, like her parents were atheist. And so we kind of got to see that shift of her, like starting to believe in God. And it was really, really cool. I loved that area because of her. And it was, it was really hard in that place too, for other, other reasons, but, um, also being a sister training leader kind of adds more things to, to worry about. You know, you're really worried about all of the other sisters in the zone. And um, that was tough for me because I felt really responsible to help them, but usually you just don't know how. And um, that also helped me feel a lot for the, the president. I thought, wow, like it's, um, it kind of weighs on you worrying about and caring about these few people. How must the president and his wife feel caring for all of us? So that kind of gave me a little insight into that. That was, that was really cool too. And also in that area, I got, I got to work with um, a sister that had been my companion in Cow Kennedy, my really hard area. And then I had also lived with at the beginning of my mission. Um, I just was with her for basically my whole mission and, and I was able to help her while I was there. Um, and so that was really, really important. I felt like even if I wasn't so successful in what I was doing in my area, which is, it is really important to take care of whoever's in your stewardship and do your best and try to talk to all the people, try to teach anyone you can. Um, but in that situation, I felt like I was really there for, for her, for that missionary. Um, I mean, that's not the whole reason. Obviously there were other good things that I was doing, but I felt like the Lord really needed me to help her. So that was a really special experience too, because, um, I could see that just one person is really important to God. It doesn't really matter like on what scale we accomplish things, just that if we're doing what, what he really wants us to do, which might not be what you think is expected of you, but it's, um, it's really important to make sure you're, you're caring for that one person that God really wants you to be focusing on and helping. And at that point it was a missionary, which was surprising, but then she was able to finish her whole mission. Like she thought about going home several times. Um, and I mean, not just because of me, but I got to participate in that time of just being there for her and helping her kind of overcome some of those challenges so that she could finish her mission. And, um, so that was, that was really cool.